right. All right. Well, thank you guys for coming out. This is episode 55 of the Downtown Podcast. So you know this is a volunteer project. So I want to give a round of applause to everybody that helped. Thank you guys very much. Um, we also usually have Spadoni here. Now, he is having his birthday party right now, so he's a little inebriated at the time. <laughs> but we're about to give him this card, but I thought it'd be fun if we could film a little happy birthday song. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Spadoni. drunken tone I hope. This is going to be a good episode. I love it. I feel like because we didn't let people in until a little later today, they just had their, their energy just got really pent up and now they're trying to let it I out. I think so too. You guys are awesome. Uh, so for our community segment this week, we have two extremely interesting people. The first person we'll be speaking to is Sarah Bena and she's from this really awesome new opportunity called The Mill, which if you're an entrepreneur, you need to take note right now about what it's about. So why don't you tell me what The Mill is? Sure. Uh, the Mill is a place to test your ideas. So it's like a micro accelerator or idea accelerator. So we're taking very early stage ideas um, and we're giving you $5,000 to test out that idea, to experiment and see if it's something that you want to pursue as a business. Um, so we're trying to lower the barrier to entrepreneurship and empower entrepreneurs and you don't have to quit your job and drop everything to be a part of this. That's awesome. I'm, I'm, and you've already started taking people through, right? Yes. So we're on our third week. And um, so we're doing this investing $5,000 in a new idea every single week. And so this is our third week. Um, we've had some fantastic applicants with all different backgrounds, a really diverse group, because it doesn't have to just be tech. It could be anything, a product, service. Um, so we're really excited to see what comes out of this. I love this idea. So you're going to be spending two months with with the actual people that you invest in too. So they kind of, have you have you checking in and giving them advice and that sort of thing too, which is highly yeah. valuable? Yeah, so once you get the $5,000, um, we have an orientation and we, if you're not local, um, we tell you all about downtown, give you tours. We help you connect with the people you should be connecting with, help facilitate those connections and networking. And then you have um, a membership to work in progress. So you have a workspace, you get access to mentors and workshops and um, all the resources that you would need in that early stage. So is this just pure passion that you're looking at at this point? Or what are the criteria that you're looking mm -hmm. for? Um, so definitely you have to be passionate and serious about it. Um, while we don't make you quit your job, we want you to be serious. And, and if it turns into a viable business opportunity, we want you to pursue it. <laughs> we don't want it to just be like, eh, I'm kind of thinking about this. Um, and uh, you can't have already had serious funding, um, and we're looking for a team of three or less. I yeah. like this a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping that it kind of smokes out people that were just kind of looking for that excuse just to give things a go with that lower risk, mm -hmm. you know, of, of entry for that. So. Exactly, yeah. It's a low risk on both parties, and it's, it's trying to make entrepreneurship more accessible. I love this, and it's another reason to move to Vegas as well. So exactly, very yeah. cool. Yeah, very cool. <laughs> so if people want to apply or find out mm -hmm. more about some of the roles that that apply to uh, anybody who wants to be eligible, where mm -hmm. can they go? Um, just go to the themilldtlv.com, and it has all the information and the application right on the site. That's perfect. Okay, yeah, I like it. Well, thank you for coming out. You're doing great work over there, at work in progress. And so. we have one last surprise for you as well. Oh, oh. that's right. Exactly. <laughs> Yes, we'll work on our communication in a moment. First, <laughs> we will talk about this bowl of fortune cookies. So first off, I want to thank Christina Alden. So Christina's a longtime supporter of the podcast. Mm -hmm. She actually made all of our new fortune cookies. So we used to use just this cheap box from China, but now we have custom <laughs> we have custom fortunes inside these. So these are tailored specifically for the downtown. So please pick one that is going to be the fortune for all of us this week. Right. If we get our magnificent fortune cookie handler out here, please. I'm going to go with this one. Ooh, perfect one. <laughs> so we will be, we'll be learning more about this fortune throughout the episode. So thank you very much for picking it. Thanks, Sarah. Thank, thank you. you. Um, now I want to throw the conversation over to Gary. So uh, you are going to help us eliminate misunderstandings here? Yes. Something, yeah, something me and Susan have many all the time. <laughs> My Aussie slang trips, a lot of people love it. <laughs> well, yes, general semantics is about language, thought, and also about human behavior. 
and human uh, growth. And one of the things is, if I put the number one, O-N-E, on a piece of paper and ask the audience what it is, most of them are going to say it's one. If I put the number one on a piece of paper and ask them what it is, they're going to say it's one. Neither one of those are one. One is an alphanumeric representation of one. One's a numeric representation of one. This is one table. It's concrete. Right. People give meanings to words. Words don't give meaning to people. So it's on us as a person, whether you're listening or talking or communicating, to get your point across. And if you don't know, ask. That's ask what the other person is saying. Mm -hmm. yeah. Once recently I was in Ketchikan, Alaska, and I was in Totem Village. And one of the people asked a guy, guide there, about how many grown men are born here. And the person looked at him and goes, well, the most we can do are babies. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. So that's a great illustration of just mis misunderstandings in general. But mm -hmm. how can uh, entrepreneurs apply it? So a lot of the people in our audience are sort of that sub-500,000 or maybe even sub-$5,000. How can that help them with their well, ideas and getting it off of, the ground? A lot of entrepreneurs can look at C, uh, go to uh, UCSD, the Sanford I. Berman Chair, and you can find some books there that will help you that are available online and also like podcasts. They're available by a person by the name of Sanford Berman. Okay. And they will help you as far as uh, develop your skills, and that way you'll be able to market yourself better mm. to the community and to be a winner, potential winner of $5,000. <laughs> well, when you've got Good, a 60 yeah. second pitch, you know, you have 60 seconds to convey your meaning of, okay. of what your app is. So, so I want you to give uh, the URL where people can check this out, but also you handed me this before the show. You told mm -hmm. me to read through it, which I haven't had a chance to yet, but tell me what's in my hand and, and what, do you have, what do you have back there for everybody? Well, back there I have flyers on the UCSD website that Sanford Berman uh, endowed, and he's a resident of Henderson. He has a PhD in semantics. And he's also uh, known as the world's foremost hypnotist. His stage nice. name huh. was Dr. Michael Dean. And he's the hypnotist that most of your uh, stage hypnotists or comedy hypnotists have copied at one point in their lives. Yeah, I might even go down that route. Who knows? Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to <laughs> But, yeah, but uh, I have flyers back there on his website and stuff, and you can get the books for free. And that's okay. actually what that is. It's a book that Sanford Berman put out back in the 80s on uh, misunderstandings and communication and how you can develop your thought processes further. When I was an undergrad student, I was able to use his communication theories and stuff and pass 45 semester hours of college level uh, courses just by taking CLIP exams. Oh, jeez. Dropped out. You know? <laughs> Should have read this first. Okay, so um, so we have so we so I know we have GaryHosea.com, but you give us another URL. Mm -hmm. What where well, should people check this out? GaryHosea.com, or you can go to UCSD uh, and look up uh, Sanford Berman uh, Chair in Communications and Semantics. Okay, great. Cool. Yeah, I mean everybody can use. That's misunderstanding. Oh, so, definitely. Yeah, increase communication. So, uh, let's give a big round of applause for our guests. Thank, Thank you. Guys. Okay, so this looks like super complicated. I have a peanut flag and a fortune cookie, and I also have Lee. Lee is here, and uh, he has graciously been voluntold to start off the fortune cookie uh, for this week. So, I am going to give you the flag in a second, but I want you to open the fortune cookie. And after you open that, if you can take the fortune out, I want you to read what it says, but don't show anybody. Okay. And don't tell me what it is either. So it's a secret. Okay. Okay. Then uh, after we've actually finished this up, I'm going to get you to take this flag as well. Okay. <laughs> and what you're going to do is you're going to turn to the person next to you and you're going to whisper that fortune to the person. 
Okay. And they're going to then whisper what they heard to the person next to them. And what we're going to do is we're going to come down here and snake all the way around until we get to the corner there. And just pass the flag every time you pass the fortune on, you pass the flag as well. That way we know when the fortune has actually reached the front of the room. So that's all you need to do. Okay. Cool? Yeah. All right. Let's get started. <laughs> You don't know how special that is. Yeah, they didn't even need to be prompted. Wow, that means a, they really do like you. That's it's a good. rowdy bunch. <laughs> okay, so our next guest is a Toronto-based social entrepreneur. She is the CEO of the Center for Social Innovation, which is co-working for people who care about the community, who do work on community projects, and it's a community launch pad. So social innovation also created a community tool that changes how people raise money. And this tool for raising money was so successful in 2010, they actually demonstrated its power by buying a $4 million building you did it all through the power of social capital. So we're going to learn a little bit more about this and how it might be coming here to our community and many of your other communities that you're involved in. So please put your hands together for Tanya Sermon. Thank you very much. So rowdy. Yeah. Woo, woo. Yeah. <laughs> you you're playing them like a, wanted to you're do that. playing them like an instrument. <laughs> yeah, go it's for like it. Orchestra. Yeah, no, you know? I'll work with you too. Give us a song. Yeah, we'll, we'll be it. Oh no, 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 that's okay. my limit. Yeah. I thought you were gonna pull out the John Williams yeah, on us. Yeah. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's talk a little bit about you. So you're a fabulous entrepreneur, but I want to start uh, by talking about what it takes to get things moving in a community. Yeah. yeah. Because I have been, I, I have been, have had my mind blown by how many people around here came for money or they thought we needed some money to do something and really when they get the kind of support that they wanted that they're actually able to do it on their own like how much money affects great entrepreneurs is a lot smaller than I thought in my mm -hmm. opinion so I wanted to hear a little bit more about um, how does a community without a Tony Shea in the middle of it grow? Well I mean first of all uh, some acknowledgement like what an incredible gift to be able to have that kind of um, contribution into Las Vegas I mean Downtown yeah. Project is, is an incredible anomaly. And, uh, and I mean, I'm, it's my first time in Vegas. Uh, I'm pretty excited ever. to be here ever. Oh, wow. Ever, yeah. 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 I'm pretty excited. <laughs> <laughs> and, and one of the things that drew me here was the Downtown Project. Uh, it's just an amazing, uh, uh, I'm fascinated to see how it's going to go. And for somebody like myself in Toronto, where we don't have a very large venture capital sector, where there isn't uh, investments um, uh, readily available, one of the big questions is how do we build that same kind of entrepreneurial spirit? Right. And in the case of the Center for Social Innovation, our mission is really focusing on social ventures or social mission organizations. So we're not just interested in a tech startup. We're interested in the tech startup that's facilitating social impact or social change in some way. And so you're further alienated from access to capital. Because by and large, social mission uh, ventures don't offer the kind of returns that a regular venture might. Right. And so okay. your opportunity to recruit investment and your investor pool shifts. And so the real question becomes, how do we tap into the power of citizens to become investors in great new ideas that matter to the planet? So at the Center for Social Innovation, we're a co-working space, a community, and a launch pad for over 600 social ventures. But as we ourselves are also a social enterprise, and as we were growing, we were, we were flummoxed with this question. We had a, a vibrant 24,000 square foot space. We had 175 organizations in the space. And the question was, uh, we wanted to go buy a building. Well, how does a little tiny nonprofit organization with great big ambition raise $6.8 million? Like, how do you get $6.8 million to buy a building? I have no idea, yeah. So one to... of my colleagues said to me, Tanya, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they said, uh, one of my colleagues said to me, if you can turn your social capital into financial capital, then you're really on to something. And so we created a community bond. And quite honestly, it's a loan instrument. It's a really straightforward financial tool that a nonprofit or a for profit could do, although ours, in the case of us, it has to be a nonprofit which offers a 4% flat rate return to be able to invest up to 10, or starting at minimum $10,000 into uh, a bond that is secured against the value of the building. Okay. So it's quite simply a loan. 
And our example of the community bond, although it was secured against a mortgage, it allowed us to buy a 36,000 square foot building, fill it with over 185 social mission organizations. They all pay rent. It's a, it's a sort of a, a really big co-working space plus, plus, plus. And that revenue allows us to pay back that debt to those investors. It turned out that we, didn't, we were able to go to unaccredited investors or not rich people. We were able to make it retirement <laughs> because that's who we had, right? That's who we were working with. We were able to make it retirement savings eligible because it was secured against the building. And what we were able oh, to okay. do, yeah. right, is we were able to actually recruit and uh, have, we now have 60 community-based investors that are all co-owners of that building. So this model in 2010, this was pre-crowd financing, pre-crowdfunding, just at the sort of get-go, we were kind of an early example. Um, but now we're seeing this model being replicated all over the place and in very micro ways. And so like the project you heard about with the mill, that's the kind of micro entrepreneurship that seeds something. And then the really interesting question is, once you've got that idea, once you've got some traction, once there's a little bit of money in there, how can you actually leverage the power of your, your community to be able to get those projects to roll? Yeah, well, that, that's, so that'd be my question. So you have, I can see getting this bond put together, but are you, how, what percentage of a community do you get to buy in on the ones that are successful? And I mean, are you like knocking on doors saying like, how about 5% of your retirement in this new bond? Yeah. Is that actually, like, how are you guys getting people involved in that sense and then to trust you and then for the whole snowball to start rolling? Uh, and there's no question, we, um, we were six years old by the time we went to go raise that money. So we had an established track record, we had legs on the ground, we had a very strong brand and identity, and we were based in the community, for the community, by the community. And so we had a lot of legitimacy to be able to go out to folks, but what was super cool is we were to get our members, we were able to invest, but also we were able to get private foundations to invest from their private capital pools. So not the part okay. that they give away, but the part that they actually they invest. Yeah. yeah. And so we were able to go to uh, people who were rich, people who were poor, not so poor, uh, and be able to, re be able to really, I, I, fundamentally, the important thing here is it wasn't about the money. When we created the community bond, it was about the relationship, and it was about the, the, um, the power of citizens coming together to be able to co-create something that they wanted. Right. And, and real quick, are you, so you're limiting the investments to a geographic location? Is that, I mean, basically if I give a bond, it would have to be invested in a small business X amount of miles from me? Or how do so, you... So we did the community bond once to buy a building. Okay. So that was our, our straight up. And now what we're doing is we're facilitating and supporting other social mission organizations to be able to gotcha. access that kind of capital. So the kinds of places that we're seeing things happening is one of the projects that's replicating the model, kind of crazy, Zupu. Right? Okay, anybody know what that is? No. So, <laughs> so there's a really, <laughs> I'm looking at it going, it's Zupu. So this, is, <laughs> so this is a really interesting model. This is a, yeah. um, a young entrepreneur in Toronto who'd been working with the Toronto Zoo, and he noticed that there was a lot of Polar poo bears. around. And his idea was to actually um, uh, power a biodiesel plant with oh. Zupu. And he needed to raise, a cool. yeah. I know, it's pretty cool. Yeah, pretty cool. He needed to raise a couple of million dollars, and so he issued zoo shares, which are the evolution of the community bond, it was a zoo share to be able to capitalize this biodiesel facility that was able to be then. Now, the project's not up and running yet, but it gives you an yeah. example of the kinds of things yeah. uh, that are starting to, we're starting to see. So it's really about, and I think the, the secret, um, the, the secret, the, the gift here is they're going, you know, you've got the assets. When you have legitimacy and you've got connection into your community and you've got those social networks and the those people who are so vitally important to your work, but they may not appear to have money at first. You think you have to go elsewhere or other for those resources. And in fact, I think what um, this is trying to do is really stretch our imaginations around where are the assets, how do we connect into those assets, and find really clever tools to be able to engage them in helping you to be a co-creator in, uh, in the solution. Okay, so if one of the main reasons we thought you'd be a great guest is because I wanted you to paint a picture of, of a possible way that in the future this community could be more owned by its own community, a place where yeah. um, some of the Tony Shays start taking a backseat to mm -hmm. other people who have invested little pieces to make some other big things happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, just, I mean, I know, you know you don't know exactly how it goes out, but how could something like that evolve? Well, I mean, us? I think that's the beautiful thing. I mean, you in Las Vegas have an incredible leg up, which is you've, you've got this magnetic attractor 
Tony Shea and the Zappos. And, and, yeah. yeah, and there's this incredible, <laughs> what did you just say? Oh, Slotzilla's slot right out the window, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. There you go, there you go. Thank um, you. But you've got this incredible magnetic attractor, which is Tony Shea who's been willing to make a, a huge investment to give you a leg up. But the real test is going to be at the end of that period, that five-year period, where you, uh, many of you have been drawn to Las Vegas because of that. That's that sort of the carrot. And the really interesting question is, what are you going to do as citizens to enrich Las Vegas, to co-create Las Vegas and to turn it into the community that has the legs to last for generations? And that is, to me, about your imaginations. It's about what you, what's important to you. It's about how your values are reflected in the communities that you're building. And to me, it's, it, you've got this incredible leg up, this incredible leapfrog ahead, but just don't, don't lose that. You know, like you leverage that momentum, make smart investments now in building local entrepreneurs and, and micro entrepreneurship and being able to kind of reimagine and take this moment mm. to reimagine what's possible because you know what? The, that money won't be there, and it's going to be up to you guys to, to make Las Vegas what you want it to be. Feel like pulling an all nighter right now. Yeah, I let's love do it. it. <laughs> let's go build something. All right, so they can follow you on Twitter at Tanya Sermon, uh, T O N Y A S U R M A N. Uh, but also, you can check us out at socialinnovation.org. We have locations in Toronto and in New York, and we are home to incredible people just like you guys. So check us out. Okay, keep the creativity going. Yeah, I like it. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, what's up? I'm Matt Holiday with Holiday What TV. Woo! Every day is a holiday. I don't make them up. They're real. For example, to <laughs> it's not funny. It's true. <laughs> no. uh, tomorrow is, uh, what is it? It's the 28th. It's National Public Sleeping Day. Yeah! Yes! Yeah. Yes, it's true. So you can be sleeping at work. It's okay. Your boss can't say anything to you. It is not to be confused with National Public Having Sex Day, which is a holiday I'm working very hard to push through Congress. You're welcome. So, yes. Um, any, uh, any entrepreneurs in the house tonight? Yeah? Yeah. Well, uh, last week was National Entrepreneurship Week. Who likes saying entrepreneurship? Say with me, it's fun. Entrepreneurship, <laughs> right? That's what I'm saying. This guy is all about that. This is Michael Durant, the uh, CEO of Creating Genius, and he's all about the heartbeat of the entrepreneur and the startup. Your free beer sponsor, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Woo! So um, please, Michael, give them the down low on Creating Genius. I don't know if I can match the energy, but... Uh... It's not expected. It's not expected and not possible, please. Okay. <laughs> uh, we started Creating Genius. Uh, it was years of experience of working with customers all across the country, and we finally found a point from where we learned what not to do and what to do, and we called it, this is this place of genius. And we started learning that our clients were doing business, but they had no personality to their business. So we start focusing on the heartbeat of their business, but also we said if your business walked into a room, how would it walk? How would it talk? How would it, how would it interact? And that's what we start focusing on. Like, you know, you hear Ram tough. That's a personality. Mm, so that's it. what we start focusing on. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, next month, which is like tomorrow, it's practically crazy, March already, uh, is International Expect Success Month. And you're all about mm. that. Yeah, it's true, it is. It really is. <laughs> what? Yeah. It's a holiday every day. What? Yeah. So, uh, talk. You, know, you told me this thing about creative greed. You've labeled that, and I love it. Tell them. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of creative people here. I'm pretty sure. And if you ever had an idea or see, saw other people doing an idea, and you feel like you had to do it also, and you walk away from the thing that you know how to do really well. And I kind of say it's like going to the buffet and figuring that you have to eat absolutely everything. Mm. Well, truthfully, why don't you just have that meal? Focus on that, and and. Being able to pull that forward more than just trying to do everything that you see everyone else do and just love what you do. I call it the in and out. I think I'm hungry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you 
And in and out Burger, they do it burgers very well. That's all they focus on. They don't have right. tacos. That's where they live. Single That's focus. where you should. Single focus. There you I go. I like it. I like it. Uh, so I hear you're writing a book. He's writing a book. That's ambitious, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So why are you writing this book? Well, first of all, I'm recording it. I'm going to get someone else to write it. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. No, but uh, the book is called The $2.5 Million Lesson. Why um, is it called that? <laughs> Because that's how much <laughs> <laughs> that's how much I had to lose to figure it out. Uh, you lost that much. Um, yeah, it, it's called live, two point five million dollar lesson living in the gray area. And there's a lot of people that that are starting businesses uh, that they get the money in the account and they see the zeros, but they never think about now. There's responsibility with that. Mm -hmm. And then you're also looking at your partnerships. You're looking at what do you do now with marketing and PR. It's, it's okay to try to figure out how to do a website. It's another thing when you realize that things are not working and you don't want to do it anymore. And you have people that have said yes to you. So the book is pretty much helping people understand those gray areas of entrepreneurship when you have money and when you don't. Mm, I love it. So uh, March is also uh, International <laughs> Ideas Month. I know you're all about the ideas of the people, of these people. So what does that mean to you, ideas? I want to find his website with all these holidays. Just, just go to my YouTube channel. <laughs> okay. Just subscribe to my show. Thank you. Go on. Uh, we, had, we had something on our wall that said there's, there's no lack of money. No one's burning money right now. The thing is, is there's a very few good ideas. Everyone's trying to do the exact same thing instead of finding something that they love to do and do it really well. There's a cartoon I get to watch with my kids. I think I watch it way too much, and it's called Robots. And it said, you know, one of the, the big robots says, see a need, fill a need. And so many times, if we were to look at what people are actually looking for and fill those needs, our business will become more I like successful. Like see a need, fill a need. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't That's coin that. That's the robot that show. That's the robot no, see, movie. You learn a lot from the kids show. Yeah, and cereal too. We, and, yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, so, lastly, um, why would an aspiring or an established entrepreneur be in touch with creating genius? What makes you guys different? Well, besides our business side, I really just had a passion to, to see uh, those that have dreams and ideas not have to go down the same road a lot of us go down, you know, and, and not have to lose it or realize that you can do it without investors because you can lose yourself with now having to answer to someone else that has said, hey, here's the check, here's the zeros, go do it, but you truly lose who you are in the process. Mm. So, you know, we created a part of our company that, you know, any entrepreneur can call us, it's no cost. Anything that you're going through, we want to be able to help. And it's, uh, if you email us at uh, the eLife, at creatinggen.com, we'll answer any questions that you need. Yes, and you will see the lower third element of your email right here on YouTube. Thanks, you guys. Michael Durant, <laughs> CEO of Creating Genius. What's up? I'm Matt Holiday. Happy holidays! Um, I am here to talk about the fortune of the week for downtown, and this is our first very special one that was made uh, by Christina Alden for us. So I am here with... Amy. And Amy's actually going to tell us what our fortune of the week is. I believe it would be to hone the art of underwater basket weaving. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Okay, so I'm, I can't see behind me, but Lee at the beginning is probably shaking his head right now. <laughs> Master the art of underwater basket weaving. I think maybe you could interpret that to be try something difficult that you didn't think you could achieve before. But that's, that's going to be my interpretation. <laughs> Do that also. Okay, do that do also. Do that also. <laughs> so um, I actually thought this was going to be super easy this week. It's uh, pretty unbelievable how it turned out. Uh, the actual fortune of the week was make stuff awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that if you weave a basket underwater, I think you're making stuff awesome so it still applies. What do you think? You're definitely making awesome things underwater. Yes. Yeah. Agreed. Thanks, everyone, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>